Hi everybody, Josette here, getting ready to replace the radiator on my 2002 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS. My car has been overheating for the past two weeks, so I started troubleshooting, starting with the least expensive repair. I have already replaced the thermostat and cleaned out the throttle body, hoping that would resolve the problem, but my car is still overheating. The radiator may be clogged up or probably even damaged. My car still has the original OEM radiator and it's lasted for 13 years, so it's probably time to replace anyway. Now, I'd like to point out that I'm not a mechanic, but I am tired of getting taken advantage of by male mechanics that do crappy jobs, sell you repairs you don't need, overcharge, and leave a mess under the hood. This is why I decided to do the job myself. I watched several DIY videos on YouTube and read the Haynes repair manual for my car. I'm videotaping this project to encourage you to believe in yourself. If I can do this with absolutely no experience in the auto industry or auto business, then you can too. I had to get over my fear and silence the little voice in my head telling me that I couldn't do this. I feared the unknown and that made me feel insecure. But once I took the initiative to learn something new that knowledge gain gave me confidence. You and I can do anything once we set our mind to it and tell ourselves, I can do this. Keep repeating to yourself, I can do this. So let's get started. I made a list of the tools and supplies you'll need for this job. I'm videotaping my list of tools and supplies so that you can pause it or write it down for yourself. Okay, here are the tools and supplies we're going to be needing for this project. So you can see the tools on the blue towel. There's a wrench, that's a 10 millimeter wrench, a ratchet, a 10 millimeter socket and a 12 millimeter socket, a flat head screwdriver, and the it's a needle nose, uh, what is that called? Uh, pliers. Then you're going to need a turkey baster to empty out the uh, reservoir. The WD-40 is to loosen the nuts and bolts to help you grease them up. Then you have a funnel and towels. It's always good to have towels, shop towels around. Paper towels for any mess you make. Those two pans, a lot of the stuff I got at the 99 cent store, okay? And the rest, all the major stuff, I bought at Pep Boys. Uh, and I got 30% off shopping online and I was able to go pick it up at the store. They had everything ready for me. I just, and I just loaded up my car. Okay, so let's move on to the radiator now. Okay, here's the picture of my radiator. It's right here in the front. This is it. Now, I'm going to start by unscrewing the plug. It's on the passenger side of the car. And I've already slid a pan to start the draining process. Okay, next I'm going to remove this piece. Um, as you can see, I'm missing the two rivets that go in here. They're little plastic rivets. Mechanics never put them back. Really sucks, doesn't it? So I have to go buy them. I think they cost like two bucks at a Mitsubishi part dealer, part store. So anyway, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to unscrew this and unclamp this. And I'm going to slide the pan. Can you see the pan? I'm going to slide the pan over so that when I unscrew the both of these large hoses uh, whatever is in here, whatever fluids in the hoses will empty out into the pan, okay?
Okay, I removed the plastic thingamajigger that was here, the air, uh, air intake, and uh, I threw it over there to the side. I cleaned it up. I forgot to mention, the needle nose pliers are used for this. You're going to pinch them and then loosen it up and then pull it back and then just jiggle this around when you're pulling it out. Just jiggle, 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 and then slowly and then get it off. Then now, and then this, I loosen the clamp and then slid it back and then jiggle, 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 and then move, push, pull, pulled it out and made sure that it went into the catch below, the, the plastic, I mean, I'm sorry, the aluminum container below. So now I'm gonna use the ratchet. This is the 12 millimeter um, socket. And this is a, called the ratchet, this, uh, this tool. So now I'm gonna use this to loosen and probably everything. I already greased it up with the WD-40 let it sit so it would loosen them up. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it. I'm gonna do these two and then these two, okay? Okay, I'm ready to pull out the radiator, but I, in order to disconnect the hoses from the bottom, but I can't do that until I disconnect this little baby, this little thing jigger here. Uh, I have this little miniature screwdriver. Uh, you could find, don't damage this. You need to pop it out from here. I try to pull it out, I probably can just pop it out. So once I pop this out, I'm gonna disconnect, I don't know if you can see that, this right here. And I'll show you when, after I pull it out, okay? After I pull, start pulling the radiator out. So I'm gonna disconnect. Okay, now that I uh, disconnected the little plastic thingamajigger, that's what it looks like right there, this piece. It hold, it secures the cable and this, I have to disconnect it. You have to squeeze this, squeeze it, and then pull it out. So it's hard for me to do with one hand, so I just wanted to show you. You're going to squeeze it and pull it out. This is a plug and play car, okay? So it looks difficult, but it's not. Okay, I already uh, removed the lower hose. I unscrewed it and then pulled it out from the bottom of the radiator. Now I have two ho little hoses left. That one, and then there's another one. This this one here that goes right underneath the, the driver's side fan. And as you can see right here, this, this one, the one on the driver's side, was clamped into this fan. I had to remove it, so I just took it off. So when I pull it out, I'm not damaging the hose at all. So I'm gonna use the pliers in the same manner that I, I pinched this to loosen and pull back. I'm gonna do the same with the metal clamps on the small hoses, smaller hoses, okay? I ended up pulling the whole radiator out. It was really difficult to pinch this thing, my jigger, the clamps, the metal clamps from below. Where's my hand? There I am. So you have to pinch it, pinch it, wiggle, wiggle, pinch it to, like tight to loosen. What it does is it loosens it, and then you wiggle, 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 and pull it, pull it back. And do the same for this one. And then here, I disconnected the electrical. You pinch it, pull it out, and this is it right here. This is it. Just pinch it and pull it out. Okay, so now I'm gonna disconnect these two, this one and this one, and I'm just gonna, I'm just, let me put this down. I'm just gonna, where is it? Here it is. I'm just gonna pull it out. Um, I need two hands so I can hold on to things, but I just wanna show you, okay? And this is the last of it, and I'm gonna set it on the floor, and then we're gonna unscrew these bolts. From, we're gonna remove the fans from the radiator and put them on the new one, the new radiator. As you can see, I've already uh, disconnected the hose, the little hoses. Once you um, jerk them around, especially if you have never changed the bottom hoses, like me, um, once you jerk it around, then it snap, it like it loosens, and then you can just start jiggling it out. Okay, just jiggle it out. So here is the finishing product. This is my old radiator. Now I'm going to remove the bolts. 
these bolts with a 10 millimeter socket using the wrench. So this is the wrench and then I'm going to put the 10 millimeter socket on here, okay? And then I'll come back. I'm not going to videotape me taking these off, okay? But I'm going to take these all off and I'm going to put the fans on the new radiator, okay? And then screw them back on. Okay, here is the old radiator. I removed the fans and I placed them on the new radiator and as you can see I'm using the cardboard that the new radiator came in. I just fold, I just flattened it so that I don't damage the new radiator. And then make sure that you remove the plastic cushions, pads on the bottom of the old radiator. Mine got stuck. I had to pull them off and then put them on the bottom here. You can see here and here. And that pads the radiator when you slide it back in. Okay, so now the next step is, oh, and make sure that you tighten this really tight, okay? And make sure that this is tight as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and slide the new radiator and I'll uh, show you uh, what I've done afterward. Okay, everybody, I installed my new radiator. Tighten the hoses, put a little hose in, screw these two puppies in, this little plastic jigger, thingamajigger goes back in, your electrical, this piece goes back in, you just plug it back in, your two bottom hoses, the little ones, I put those in from above before I, I just set the radiator onto the top of the car and then I, uh, I just put them in and then I slid the radiator into the car and then I installed the bottom hose after I slid the radiator in and then screwed it in from the bottom I screwed the um, uh, what is it called oh gosh I forgot what this is called the clamp in from the bottom and this is upside down so I was able to just screw it upside down um, okay so now I have to flush the engine and I'm gonna pour two gallons of uh, distilled water into the radiator so that I can flush the radiator and drive it around, okay? My phone cut me off, my battery's dying. So okay, here are the instructions. You can pause the video here and make sure that the plug is uh, securely tightened and then remove the radiator cap from your old Mine came with a, a plug on the bottom. My new radiator came with a plug, but it didn't come with a radio cap, a radiator cap. So I removed it from the old one and put it on the new one. And it, uh, and I checked. There's no rust on the radiator. I just cleaned it off. And uh, you're gonna. I'm now gonna pour distilled water, two gallons of distilled water, and uh, peak super cleaner and flush. So I'm gonna pour that in. I'm gonna pour that into the radiator. Car. I haven't turned on the car at all. <clears throat> oh, and I forgot to mention that I never disconnected the battery cables. Um, they People advised that and I forgot, totally forgot. So obviously nothing happened to me, so it's not necessary, but if you want to be safe, play it on the safe side, disconnect them. Remember, negative first, then positive. The black one first and the, the red one. Okay, so I'll be back. I'm going to go ahead and pour everything in. Once you've filled it to the rim, go ahead and start the car so that the water will be sucked into the engine and it'll give you room to pour in the remaining, the remainder of the water that you need to pour, fill in, okay? Hi everybody, it's Wednesday and I left, I ended the last segment uh, when I was getting ready to flush the coolant system with water. And uh, while I was test driving the car, after I filled up the, the radiator with water, I was left confused and dismayed when I saw the temperature gauge overheating. It was the car was still overheating and I couldn't understand why that was when I followed the step-by-steps -step instructions 
that I had written down that the guys had given us um, on YouTube and on web chat rooms. Uh, but there was a lot missing to this puzzle. So I took a break and um, I just I just was distraught because my car was still overheating. This is why I was distraught. I had already changed, I already cleaned out the throttle body, which is right here in this little compartment. It's right next to the battery. This is the battery, just right over here. I cleaned that out, and I had already replaced the thermostat, which is right in this little, this is a thermostat housing. You remove that, two bolts, and um, remove that and then take out the old thermostat, put in the new one and you're done. Put this over and then replace, put the, the housing back on. And this is the hose that, this is the hose that's connected to the thermostat housing that goes straight to the bottom of our radiator for the Mitsubishi Eclipse. This is the radiator, it goes straight down to the bottom. So anyway, I went to bed, I just was, I was done for the day. I woke up the next morning, first thing I did was come out and I was freaking out thinking, oh, maybe I left the um, plugs in the radiator. And I remember checking, but I doubled, I doubted myself. So, anywho, I came out, I disconnected the hoses from the radiator, this top hose and the bottom hose on the bottom, on the, dri on the driver's side. And I stuck my finger in, and there was no plug in either in either um, opening. So then I called um, the uh, manufacturer, Spectra Premium, I think, if I remember correctly, and I asked them, "What the heck is the problem? Installation? I installed the radiator in my car, and..." The guy was just incredible. He couldn't believe that I installed it myself. And I said, it, the tank only takes three quarters of, of a gallon of coolant. What's the deal? And my car is still overheating. And he said, well, did you fill up the, the reservoir? I said, no, because I was filling up the tank. I had no idea that we were supposed to fill up the reservoir. And he goes, okay, what happens is your car has to bleed out and yada, 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 whatever. So he said that professional mechanics have a system uh, that bleeds out the bubbles, the air bubbles in our coolant system, the whole coolant system. It goes through the heater core, back into the radiator up here, I mean back through the engine, it just, it just cycles out. And those air pockets or bubbles have to be pushed out. And so he said, go ahead and fill up the tank. So now you know. When you're going to get ready to fill up the coolant, fill up the tank with your coolant. And then fill up your um, reservoir to full, the full level. Can you see that? It says full. So fill it up. And what, so that's it, what I did. And then I started the car. I ran the car for 10 minutes and waited for the, um, the fans to go off and the, uh, what is that called again? Ah, uh, I forgot what that's called. The thermostat to open. Once the thermostat opens, um, you can go ahead. I, I turned on the heat, the heater full blast as the guys have said in all the videos and chat rooms. And I let it run for 10, 15 minutes and, um, then I just, I turned off the car and I took a break. Then I, uh, the next morning I came out and this was empty. The reservoir was empty. And then, then it started to make sense to me what the deal is. A lot of mechanics, it, apparently, the guys are great at giving us step-by-step -step instructions, but they don't explain to us why things happen. Why? The why. We, I need to know the why. So it, it just, it, I can understand better how this whole system functions. So what happened was, well, allow me to illustrate, okay? 
Okay, I'm going to illustrate how the coolant system works when we're refilling it after we've installed the radiator. Okay, I'm, I'm using root beer. As you can see, this is not beer. This is root beer. This bottle is root beer. And it's it has carbonated water, which functions similar to the uh, coolant, the coolant, the antifreeze, the antifreeze that we're gonna pour, that we pour into the radiator. Okay, now I'm pouring. You can see it. I'm pouring it in. I'm filling up. Oh, you see all the bubbles? Okay, now what? I'm gonna state the obvious, but you could see. This is the reason why my radiator when I after I flushed it with water only uh, it was filled up with three quarters of a gallon of coolant versus the almost uh, two gallons that uh, capacity that's supposed to uh, contain or receive so um, anywho this is equivalent to the three quarters there's only Right here, it's a. It looks like a third of the glass is filled with root beer. The rest is all bubbles. So that's what happens in our cooling system when we're first pour when we're pouring and after we we installed the radiator, we flushed it out with water, and then now it's empty. And here we're starting fresh, and this is what happens. So the next morning, if I let this glass sit here overnight, like I did my car. All that's going to be left is the root beer, and all of these bubbles are going to go away. These pocket air, air bubbles are going to go away. So then, the next morning, when it was when the rate reservoir was emptied out, I went ahead and I I poured more into the reservoir. Up, oh, you see, it's overflowing, and that's what happens on a, a radiator cap. Like if you have the radiator radiator cap open it starts to like fizzle up and overflow so just know that when you're filling up your radiator with coolant close the cap I know everyone else said leave it open let the air bubbles come out and they called it burping the system I'm sure there's an easier way but this is how I figured it out fill it up to whatever you can whatever the limit is the after you have installed the radiator Make sure you fill this up to full and then let it sit or you can start the car. I guess, uh, like I said, there's probably an easier way, but what I did, I let it sit. The next morning, this was empty because what happened was the air bubbles were coming out into this container and it was sucking the uh, coolant into the system. As the air bubbles were coming out, it was sucking the coolant in. And so I went ahead Tuesday morning, I filled this up again. I actually drove it around and it's starting my needle, uh, the temperature gauge in the car that I started this segment with is now leveling off. So when I went to Pet Boys to uh, return, uh, to recycle the, my old radiator and the cooling fluid, uh, <clears throat> I asked the guy, I said, um, is there, are there any tips because now my, my system is starting to level off to the half point where it's supposed to be but it's still kind of above half and he said well that's what happens we have a system here that does it for you so when we deliver the car to you it's already done you don't have to worry about it but since I'm doing it I'm a do-it-yourselfer he said by the end of the week it should level off within a couple of days don't worry because this is gonna empty out again just refill it and the system is just gonna just uh, burp itself basically and that's what it's doing so don't freak out like I did. Um, I went back to the drawing board Monday night. I watched all the videos, read everything, and I was just stressed. Don't, don't. Relax and know. I, I just had to figure it out. <laughs> so just know you're okay. Radiator's not defective. <clears throat> but just make sure that there are no plugs in these in the openings where you uh, install the hoses. Uh, before you put the hoses back on uh, and uh, so everything's working fine this took me less 
it took me a little no a little over an hour to do and that's because I was doing this video and uh, just took a little few breaks and I took my time uh, installing this but next time if I would do this for my mom's car or whomever it'll only take me a half an hour I called my local Mitsubishi and asked him how much they charge and he's and the guy said a hundred and ten dollars an hour and it's gonna take two to three hours so do the math I mean that's crazy um, and so that that shocked me but and then the other estimates I was given was 150, 160, and 180 to have a radiator installed. So I saved myself uh, some pretty good dough there. Um, and it's not hard, okay, ladies and gents? It, this is not hard to do. So remember this analysis that I use, or this comparison, and uh, know that this is your coolant system and it has bubbles let the bubbles come out and yummy yummy so now i'm going to enjoy this root beer and i just want to say to you guys uh go for it you have nothing to lose you can do this and um save yourself some money uh this only cost me 107 dollars online i got 30 percent off uh, at pep boys online website and then I uh, requested to pick it up at the local store. And I want to give them uh, a shout out. The Pet Boys in North Hollywood on Lancashire has the best service. They had all my stuff ready for me when I showed up at the store. And they loaded up my car. Awesome people. They're really great. On Lancashire off of um, Oxnard in North Hollywood. So, anywho, uh, well... What else can I say, but uh, just like I started the segment with saying, believe in yourself and anything is possible. So here's to a finished project and now I consider myself a grease monkey as these gloves. Ah, this is, I am a grease monkey. Oh yeah, you can get these gloves. For less than ten dollars if you don't want to damage your nails I have no nails because I've been stressing out a lot and uh, working on yard work so these gloves are awesome you can protect your nails your fingernails and uh, anywho love you guys good luck and just go for it you have nothing to lose go for it hey guys one last thing um, I've owned this car, I've had this car for 13 years, and um, as you can see, my engine bay is filthy. And I've let other mechanics come in here and do their job, whatever they needed to do. But now that I've actually been doing the work, and I'm in here myself, I want this cleaned up. I called a local, um, what are they called, a detailer, car detailer in Burbank and I asked how much it would cost to clean the engine bay they said sixty five dollars so pride of ownership I should have done this sooner but now that I'm actually in my engine compartment myself um, I'm gonna make sure that I keep this clean and so that's a recommendation to you uh, sixty five dollars is like going to get a pedicure manicure whatever uh, this you've paid so much money we've paid so much money for our cars we should want to keep them nice and clean okay it's your investment anywho uh josette signing off and uh peace out okay bye hi everybody sorry i know i signed off already but um i'm out running errands this is the third time i'm driving the car i refilled the reservoir tank with coolant and um, the, the radiator itself is already cool, uh, filled. I'm driving around. I just wanted to show you my, the thermo the Oh God, I forgot what this is called. Uh, well, anyway, <laughs> I forgot what this is called. Um, uh, the temperature gauge. 
should be at half or below half, not higher ever, okay? So as you can see, I have the heater on full blast just to be safe because uh, that way the the rate, the coolant has to run through the, uh, what is it called, the heater core, uh, and back out into the, and through the engine and through the radiator. So I just have it running just to be safe, and uh, it's below half, so hey, job well done. If I can do it with no mechanic experience, having never done this before, you can too, okay? So uh, this time I'm saying goodbye. I just wanted to show you the finished job. This is how it should be. This is how your temperature gauge should look, okay? Bye, guys, and best of luck to you. Anything's possible. Bye.